My name is Oliver Tompkins and I am with the new Master of Crime, author J.K. Franco. Eye for Eye is his book and I've managed to nab him, secure him for 30 minutes. J.K., how are you feeling? Great, great, great to be here with Look you. Look at this gorgeous view we've got. It's fantastic, isn't it? So, Eye for Eye, in layman's terms, J.K., what's, what's the book about? Right, so it's, it's basically about two people, a couple, a married couple. Uh, that are faced with some unusual and kind of tragic circumstances that drive them in direction of considering whether or not to kill somebody. Right, right? okay. The Sunday Times here in London uh, just called it uh, Modern uh, Strangers on the Train. That's right, Sort yeah. of like the old Hitchcock uh, yep. story in the film. So it goes along those lines, uh, but really I can't go much deeper than that without starting to give away some of the spoilers that, you know, that okay. set up the twists. I'm going to be honest with you, I'm a bit of a film person, okay. I do love to read books, I have read this one, yeah. okay, and I'm not just saying this, I absolutely loved it. When I read the book, it's a, it's a piece of fiction, and what I found was that it seemed, as I read it, it, was, it could have been a true story, it felt so real to me that it was like based on true events or based on a true story. How do you, how do, you do that? How do you create the characters? It's, it kind of comes to you. I mean, and, you know, the, the first draft is horrible. I mean, yeah. because, you know, when you first write it out, you're kind of trying to get the storyline going, and there's no life to the characters. And really, one of the things that, that you struggle with the most, the most is to make them feel like they're real people. Yeah. But once you do, then it kind of, the, the thing sort of turns, because then when you start putting them in situations, there are things that you know they would or wouldn't do based on who they are. And so they kind of start to run the story themselves in some ways. It gets a little weird. You've been likened to authors such as John Grisham, and Gillian Flynn of Gone Girl yeah. fame. How does that make you feel? That make you feel it's, I mean, I get the Grisham reference just because yeah. of the legal, the legal background. Um, I think the, the Flynn reference and the Gone Girl is, comes more from, from all the twists that are in the book. I mean, because Gone Girl is, you know, one of the things that was really cool about it is that, you know, it takes you down a path and then you get, yeah. you get kind of turned on your head. And that's, you know, one of the things I like about writing and about reading when I read, you know, non historical non-historic fiction is the twist that you don't expect and that everything comes together because I can't stand a book where you get there and there's a loose end or yeah. you know that's very frustrating so I you know one thing I did not want to have in my books is that kind of thing but I like the twists yeah and also controversy you like a bit of, everything's a little bit of everyone loves a bit of controversy now yeah. there is a tad of controversy in this book do you know what I'm talking about when I'm mm. I can think of a couple of things. Which one are you thinking of? Let's, uh, let's go with chapter 19. Oh, yeah. yeah. Chapter 19. Now, obviously, we've read the book. We know about it. But what, for people that haven't read it yet, because I'm sure they will, why is that chapter um, considered to be controversial? Well, so the thing, and it was in an earlier draft, so then it was, I think, 14, but it's ended up being chapter 19. I had an editor who signed on to go through and... and sort of copy edit the whole book, yeah. feedback and that kind of thing. And one day I get an email basically saying that they're not comfortable with the plot or the storyline, that it's it's too morally questionable. This is your editor? My editor. Wow. And that chapter 19 is sort of what did it for them, and they and they quit. They resigned. Um, Just like that? Yeah. Which, you know, I mean, I, I get it. I mean, anyone's got to follow their conscience. Yeah, what do you say to that? You say, thank you? Or <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it, it, it was sort of a backhanded compliment. I mean, yeah. you know. So, yeah, yeah, but it was, uh, it's odd. And, you know, I mean, some people find some of it more controversial than others. I guess it depends sort of on your tolerance levels. This book is realistic. This, this could happen to anyone. And your tagline is, what would you do? What's the, what's your thought process behind that? Right, so, uh, well, maybe, and maybe it comes from the fact that I like historical fiction, but I hate fiction that requires so much of a, of a suspense of disbelief that it's not, it doesn't feel credible. Yeah. Like it doesn't feel like it could really happen. And so when I was writing this, I wanted it to feel like, and, and really that's part of when I said the inspiration came coming from the grocery store. I was imagining the, the guts of this storyline happening between myself and someone I know, a neighbor. Okay. Right? And, yeah. and that kind of kicking the whole thing off. And so when I started writing it, I wanted it to read in such a way that, that you can put yourself in the place of, of this couple and you can imagine and understand why they would do it and you kind of ask yourself you know if I was in their situation would I go that far right and, and the tagline came later I mean because when people read the drafts and you know as we were going yeah. through the whole process 
kind of like your reaction. A lot of people said, I could really imagine myself, and I'm kind of asking myself, would I do what they did? And would I go that far? Or if not, what would it take? And I got a lot of that feedback. Yeah. And, and that's kind of where the, where the tagline sort of picked up and got slapped on it. But it, you know, it, it's in there, yeah. It came out of the book. Mm, what, what do you think? Would you take the path of Warren Susie, or do you think you would... Would you do something? It, it depends on on what, you know. I mean, what what's what's the scenario? I mean, what's I mean? I, I can imagine a lot of people that that would do it, and I yeah. think that if the if the circumstances were extreme enough, I wouldn't put it past me. Actually, I can see why one would say that, right? Because um, we have to read the book. It's it's very it's very powerful stuff, and it would be great to just get some other people's views on what they would do and you know it was it's it's great that what would you do is so powerful because it, it, it does make you think right it makes you think yeah. am i roy and susie or am i someone else yeah and i think that there's a there's also a cumulative effect to it because when, when the story starts out only a couple of things have happened to them and then as as the tent as the events sort of start to pile on yeah it starts to build more momentum in them to push them down a path and that's kind of the question i think uh, you know comes there. I mean, people are slighted every day. Yeah. And no, they don't kill anyone. But then there are the people that do. And what is it? You know, what's the cumulative effect of you know, you know, what was the last thing that kind of pushed them to that point? Yeah. Because it can be a chain of events. Yeah. Like you said, and related or not. And yeah, yeah. Just come together and. And then one tiny thing can make someone push. And you don't know what other people are dealing with, and that's what's great about this book because you get yeah. an instant insight to the characters, Ron, Susie, yeah. and other characters that gives you a you know a great insight about yeah. the book. Yeah. So there's one of, this is one of two books, right? Or this is one of the th no, so far three. Yeah. That's exactly what my next question was going to be because um, when I read the prologue, I, was, um, I don't want to give a spoiler away, but when they were when it, when you're reading it, I was thinking, are the Roy and Susie characters going to be introduced? So yeah. they are, and they're going to be in the third ones as well. They're going to be yeah, they're going to be in all of them. Who really comes. Uh, into a much bigger role is Christy. So in the first one, I think she makes a cameo. I think she appears once. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Although it's a lot about her. I mean, everything's driven sort of by her, but she's not really involved. In okay. two, she became, takes on a much larger role, and in three, even more. So you'll see a lot more of her. So we're going to see the same kind of twists. Oh, yeah. That's and, the whole point. And Because so, as soon as you're yeah. saying Christy to me, yeah. um, I'm thinking, oh, hang on a minute. Yeah. How, how is this going to play? So there are going to be some twists. And, oh, oh, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. That's I look forward part. to Right, I've been Oliver Tompkins. Speaking with J.K. Franco right here, we better let him go now because he's going to be late for his own book launch. Don't forget, Eye for Eye is available at all good bookstores. Go and get your copy now.